Something I always wanted to learn to make is kombucha. It's filled with healthy gut bacteria and it tastes delicious. So I decided I'm going to learn how to make kombucha and I want to share my journey with you. I started my kombucha journey in June of 2021. At first, it was quite overwhelming. But once you get the hang of it, it can be enjoyable and relaxing. In the beginning, I found each recipe seemed to be missing a crucial piece that another recipe included. Out of that research, I've created my own kombucha recipe that I wanna share with all of you. In this video, I'm gonna try to touch on every aspect from start to finish for making kombucha. Here's the equipment you will need in order to make your kombucha. A four cup glass measuring pitcher, several one gallon glass jars, tea, either plain black or plain green tea, a teaspoon, one cup measuring utensil, silicone or wood utensils for stirring, sugar, a SCOBY along with the two cups of the liquid from your SCOBY, I'll explain what a SCOBY is in just a little bit. Some cloth, rubber band, and string. And several glass kombucha bottles. Here I have the 33 ounce along with the 16 ounce. And a teapot. Let's talk briefly about SCOBYs, or mothers as they're also called. SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. The fermentation process turns the sugar into alcohol or acid. Hence, you end up with kombucha. I have learned during my kombucha making process that scobies can look totally different and that's okay. I just wanted to interject here and discuss scobies a little bit further. So you're probably wondering where you can get a scoby from. I at first ordered mine online and I got it from Amazon and it's from Fermentaholics. This was nice because this was a great way to get started on making kombucha. On the back, it does give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to make your first batch of kombucha. I did find this really handy. However, there were still some steps missing or some additional information missing that made it a little confusing for me. I did end up having to go online and try to piece it together what I was supposed to do. But this is a great way to start. If you're fortunate enough that you have someone close to you that already makes kombucha, they can actually just give you a SCOBY along with two cups of the liquid so that you could start brewing from their batch. Another thing I'd like to bring up is how long you should use your SCOBY for. It says you can make five batches out of one SCOBY. I agree with that because the older SCOBYs will tend to start to disintegrate, fall apart, peel away, and you'll notice that as you go through your process. The other thing I would like to note is that with every batch of kombucha, it does make another baby SCOBY. And you're gonna notice, at least for me, the baby SCOBY grows on top of the existing SCOBY and it starts to layer. I haven't seen anyone say that it can't layer and I allow it to happen because the kombucha tastes better in my opinion and it also gets fizzier throughout time when your scobies start to stack a little. What I'll do is I'll flip over the scoby and I'll peel away one or two of the old layers. They come apart easily because you're utilizing them, they will disintegrate so you'll be able to just peel it off. Don't damage your scoby. You don't wanna put holes in it, you don't wanna try peeling or separating a scoby from it if you can't do it safely. Now it's time to start brewing our kombucha. We're gonna start by boiling six cups of filtered water. Well water is also fine to use. Just make sure that you don't use city water as the additives in it will affect your kombucha and change the pH, which means your kombucha won't turn out. 
I'm adding six teaspoons of black tea. Please note that the black tea is completely plain black tea. You can either use black or green tea, but it must be plain. If it's flavored with anything, that will also ruin your batch of kombucha. And the teaspoons need to be even, not mounded. If you're not using loose leaf tea, you will need four to six tea bags. Typically, one tea bag holds one teaspoon of tea, but that's not always the case, so you might wanna make sure that you measure out one of your tea bags before starting the process to know how much tea is in them. If you're using black tea, make sure you bring your water to a full boil. If you're using green tea, it only needs to be about 175 degrees. I put four cups of water in my tea kettle to steep, and you're gonna to wanna to steep the black tea for nine minutes. And that's a precise nine minutes. You do not wanna go over that time frame, or your tea will be too acidic and it won't turn into kombucha. With your extra two cups of water, you're gonna to wanna to split it out between your one gallon glass jar your glass measuring pitcher, your utensils. This will sterilize your equipment. And if you have a batch that's ready to go on its second ferment, you're also gonna sterilize the glass bottles that you will put your completed kombucha in. As you can see here, I'm swishing the water around and then dumping it out. You only need to let the water sit in the glass jars for about 30 seconds before you can dump it out. In your sterilized glass pitcher, you will add one cup of sugar. Here, I added one cup of organic cane sugar. I do not recommend using any other kind of sugar except cane sugar, organic or non-organic. Once your nine minutes is up, you're gonna strain your tea. Now pour your hot strained tea into your glass pitcher with the sugar. Use your sterilized spatula to stir your tea mixture until all your sugar has dissolved. Once your sugar is dissolved, allow your tea to sit for 30 minutes. This waiting period will allow the sugar to fully dissolve and to allow the tea to cool a little bit. While our tea is cooling, let's talk about how to cover your kombucha. In the beginning, I just bought some kombucha cloths that you could get online. They were okay. I found they were only single thickness, and when you washed them, they shrunk. Everything you do with this kombucha, you wanna make sure it is as clean as possible. So with the cloths, once you use one, you absolutely wanna wash it. You don't wanna take it and put it on another batch of kombucha. That's just how you get fruit flies and other bacteria growing that you don't want. What I ended up doing was buying some cheap muslin fabric that you can get at any local craft store, cut it up to fit the jars, and sewed it together. So this is double layered. I found that with double thickness, the kombucha can still breathe properly, but that you won't get fruit flies. The other thing you're gonna wanna make sure you have are rubber bands, and this is to go around the outside of the cloth to hold it in place, and also prevent any bugs from getting in. What I did find is while rubber bands are great, you also need string. I mean, a rubber band will hold it tight, but you could really increase the ability by adding string. So what I always do is put the rubber band around the cloth on the top, and then I take a piece of string or twine, and I double loop it around and tie it. That is a guarantee you're not gonna get any bugs inside your kombucha. And I, I bring up bugs a lot only because fruit flies are so attracted to kombucha. It smells so sweet and they will go right after it. I did have some fruit flies in the beginning and once I double thickened the cloth and went with string, that was it, no more fruit flies. Made it so much easier. Once your tea and sugar mixture has sat for 30 minutes, 
You will add it to your one gallon glass jar along with three cups of filtered room temperature water. Now let your tea sit for three to four hours until it comes to room temperature. You don't need to cover it in this stage. You just wanna make sure that it fully cools. You never wanna add your SCOBY or the two cups of the kombucha liquid to a hot batch of kombucha. You don't even want it to be warm and that's because it will kill the bacteria. You can test the temperature of the water by feeling the outside of the glass jar with your hands. Once it feels room temperature, it's ready for the next step. And I'm gonna pause there again. One thing that's really important is you don't ever wanna use stainless steel when you're making kombucha. That will kill the bacteria and you don't want that. I recommend, as I said, silicone or wood to stir it. If you're going to pour it, I wouldn't recommend using plastic or stainless steel if you need a funnel. I just use it out of the glass pitcher and pour it into the completed bottles. And if you need to test your kombucha to see if it's sweet enough to begin your second batch, I bought wooden straws that I can just insert in, pull out, and taste the kombucha. That way I'm not damaging the SCOBY or the bacteria in it at all. Now that our tea is cooled to room temperature, we're ready to assemble our first batch of kombucha. I'm gonna start by getting my SCOBY out of the prepared batch of kombucha and two cups of the kombucha liquid. Before touching your SCOBY, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have thoroughly washed your hands and forearms and dried them with a clean towel. You do not wanna add any extra bacteria into your kombucha. As you can see here, my original SCOBY sunk to the bottom and on top is my brand new baby SCOBY. I am not going to be using this baby SCOBY in my new batch, but you absolutely could and you would just need two cups of the kombucha liquid from the finished kombucha. Or you could take the baby SCOBY, put it in its own jar and let it grow for two weeks. Or you could gift it to someone else who wants to make kombucha. As you can see, I put the SCOBY into my new kombucha batch, and now I'm going to stir my kombucha that is ready, and I'm gonna pour two cups of this kombucha into my glass Pyrex measuring cup that I did sterilize, and then pour it into my new kombucha batch. I wanna take a moment here to point out something that you may see in your kombucha, and that is floaties. They're a little slimy, they're little bits and pieces, but don't be alarmed and don't worry. That actually means that you have a really good batch of kombucha. That means your bacteria is right and they are perfectly healthy and safe to drink. I'm now gonna add the remaining water into my new kombucha batch, and that's gonna be anywhere between two and three cups. If you look here, this is the exact level that the kombucha should come up to in your jar. So it's right as it starts to taper at the top. Now gently stir the tea so that it's all incorporated. And if you need to, adjust the SCOBY just so that it's not folded on top of itself. But it can either float at the top or sink to the bottom. Wipe the outside of your jar with a wet paper towel and then dry it with a dry paper towel. And this is to prevent any stickiness on the outside in case you spilled any kombucha and to prevent any fruit flies. Now add your cover along with your rubber band and string and you're set to go. You're gonna put it in a warm, dark place for nine to 10 days. And when I say warm, it needs to be kept between 65 and 80 degrees. After seven to 14 days, your kombucha is ready for its second ferment. I prefer the taste of it at nine to 10 days I found any less than that, it's very sweet, and any more than that, and it becomes quite tart. Hi, me again. I wanna interject one more time. So now you're gonna start your process of preparing the second ferment. You will do the second ferment 
by starting a whole new batch of kombucha, just like the beginning of this video, removing your SCOBY and your two cups of liquid, and whatever remains in your kombucha that sat for nine or 10 days is your ready kombucha that begins your second ferment. Your second ferment is where you're gonna add your fruits and flavorings. You can add whatever you like. I have tried such a variety and I've listed them here on the screen for you just to kind of get an idea, but it's not limited to these. You, you can come up with any flavor combinations you want. Now we're gonna start flavoring our kombucha. As you can see here, I'm using cinnamon in one bottle. I'm gonna use birch in another bottle. And then I'm also going to use lavender. Keep in mind that whatever flavoring you're putting in your bottle, you're going to want to make sure that it doesn't get stuck in your bottle. So for example, the cinnamon sticks I can only use in these short bottles, otherwise they'll get jammed in the big ones and I can't get them out. Now there is an exception to the stainless steel rule. You can use it here when you're putting something in before you put kombucha in. So I'm just gonna use it to get this lavender in without making a mess. That's totally fine. You just don't wanna use stainless steel when it comes to pouring your kombucha in. I'm now gonna pour my completed kombucha tea into my sterilized glass pitcher and begin to pour it into the bottles. I wanna point out here that when you fill your bottles, make sure that you leave a little gap at the top and that gives you some room for expansion because it will fizz up and if you add fruits into the mix, they will definitely expand. Now wipe the top of your bottles, dry them off, put the lids on, and put them in the cabinet for one to two days to ferment. During that time, you're gonna wanna burp the bottles twice a day. That will prevent the bottles from cracking or exploding. I place my bottles in the same cabinet as my other kombucha. Once your bottles have sat for 24 to 48 hours, we're ready to take them out, strain them, and place them in the refrigerator. As you can see here, I am using a stainless steel strainer and at this point of the process, it is perfectly safe to do so. I hope that you found this video useful and helpful, and I hope that your kombucha journey is as successful as mine. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if you made kombucha, tell me about it below. Tell me how it turned out. What flavors did you make? I'm always looking to learn more. In the next video, I will be showing you how to make your own SCOBY from scratch.